you are willing to look past and one thing you are not willing to look past, <clears throat> start with our guest. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm willing to look go. past someone who's not. Hi, Jada. I was about to say, let's start with our <laughs> guest <laughs> and uh, Jada oh, opens her mouth. No, no, Jada, go ahead. I was hoping, no, no, no. I really wanted to. No, no, no. Oh, Lord. You better drink some tea. You she drink first of all, anything. first of all, she don't Take your ass on a Pepsi date. Right, Shut right, up. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Let's not even listen to Nisha because she has the We're not even. You have to have a mic. You have to have a mic. <laughs> anyway, like, like, oh, you gotta drink like some tea. Like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, a man having kids, that's a deal breaker. You know what I mean? Like, it's already complicated trying to get to know you, but now I gotta get to know you, your kid, the baby mama. I gotta see you every other week because you got the baby. Like, that's a lot. Do I really want to put myself in a situation like that? Do I want to deal with your baby mama looking at you crazy? Do I want to deal with her dipping into her pockets before? You know, I gotta wait for Uncle Sam to get it, then I gotta wait for whoever, your, your bills, and then I'm after that. Like, no, I'm not into that. I don't want that. Like, and, and I don't want you to have no attitude when she call you and we out to dinner, and now all of a sudden you got an attitude with me. I'm gonna have a problem with that. So, no, I I ain't dating no man with no kids because it's not my thing. Hey guys, welcome back to Eight at the Table. It's your host, Amanda. Today we have Jada. Hey guys, yes, I'm back. It's Jada B, baby. But first, before we get into our amazing topic today, we just want to introduce our guest. Go ahead, girl, tell us about yourself. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Darnell. By day, I am the senior manager and head of the department for creative and marketing operations for a fashion brand. And by night, I am a host, influencer, funny girl, and best friend in your head. Yes. Ooh, we love, love that. Thank I love you. a funny girl because I'm so goofy. Sometimes it goes over people's heads. It's like, <laughs> she's stupid. But yeah, so um, today we have some dope topics. But first, we want to say thank you so much for your support. Thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing. We appreciate all of the love. And it's only going to get better. So thank you again. But today, we are going to talk about what things you can overlook in a relationship and what is just like a deal breaker. Like, you cannot overlook it. But so. Jada, before we get into the topic, Eight at the Table, we did come up with uh, three questions to ask our guests as okay. icebreakers. So we're going to go ahead and ask you three questions awesome. and you can give us your response. Awesome. I didn't even know that. Um, oh, yeah, girl, it's new. <laughs> <laughs> I've been gone for so long. Okay, so first question. Okay. If you can have dinner with anyone, who would it be? My dad. And the reason why I say that is because he died when I was like 11 and I didn't really get a chance to kind of like know him or like know him more, you know, as a young lady. So if I had uh, an opportunity to eat with anyone. He would be the first person I would pick. Beautiful. That's a wonderful. I really answer. love that answer. I was oh my God, not I almost cried. <laughs> I was <laughs> not <laughs> thinking beyond the grave, but that was great. Thank that you. was. I can't even, think, I can't even imagine losing a, a parent. And you so know what? That's actually my least favorite question. Um, but I actually loved your answer. That oh was God, really I'm 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 tearing up. No, Lord no, have no, mercy. Uh, question. What's okay, <laughs> we're gonna get to the next question. Okay, so you're on your last 24 hours on this earth. Okay, and you can sleep with anyone in the world you want to. Who would it be? My boyfriend. Ooh, okay. <laughs> and that's fine. no lie. Yeah, yeah. I was so like, I, like fine. Outside of him. <laughs> outside of my boyfriend. You've already, you already been there, done that. So I know I'm in love. Um, oh, oh, you're in love. Okay, oh, fine. I'm gonna put a ring on it. <laughs> um, who I would sleep with? Lord have mercy, Jesus. Um, would it be Jesus? Because I mean, you can't sleep with. Jesus. No, not Jesus. No, okay. we're not gonna go there. Okay, Thank sure. you, Lord. Sorry. Um. I uh, is Jesus celibate? Uh, I I hope so. Um, I, maybe Morris Chestnut. Maybe Morris. Oh, that I like Morris because he's chocolate. Answer. He's chocolate, mm. and he's just beautiful, oh, and he baby. he ages. He's timeless. Yeah. Oof, Lord have mercy. Sorry, Q. If you're watching, damn, that's a good <laughs> that's answer. Oldie but goodie. Boyfriend yeah. is just pretend. Yeah, we just joking. <laughs> we just joking. Good thing you ain't asked me that. <laughs> Hmm. And okay. the last question <laughs> okay. is when you go out, okay, what's your go-to drink? Well, we learned today that I don't drink. Oh. 
Um, right. So my go to is anything dark soda like Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, root beer. Oh, that's my go to okay. drink. I know I'm probably okay. very boring to everyone. No, but... no that's OK. <laughs> no, because have a it's just like life. everyone keeps it semi consistent. Right. You know, with the drinks that they like. Maybe right. it's like they have a top three drink or, right. you know, but everybody has something that they always get. I'm not so. going to lie. I started feeling bad because every single time I go out to eat, I have to drink liquor. And that's why the tab be so damn high because I'm a I drink alcohol. I wouldn't feel bad about that. Lately, I've been trying to First just. First of all, I waited right. 21 years to be able to drink alcohol. Right. Man, when I go out to eat, I see that as treating myself. I, I'm gonna have a drink. I gotta stop. I, I gotta drink. Feel, the, I just ignore the water. Two or three. I'm never. <laughs> I'm never feeling bad about that. Like, what kind of water you want? We just drink alcohol. Over here. <laughs> so just just skip the water. So. The water is actually just for Razadot. You could just <laughs> leave right. it on the table, sir. Just taking up space. I got eight appetizers coming. <laughs> so yeah, that was a nice icebreaker. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. That was really good. Mm, I'm good. still. I, I'm still a little teary eyed. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully, I'm not running. Go ahead, girl. No, no, no. You're no, not. No, you're fine. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so what's it? Okay, so. We, the first question was, if, if a man had stinking breath, is that a deal breaker for you? It was. I was in a situation like that mm. before. And um, loved the guy. Really nice guy. You know, tall, dark, handsome. But it affected our intimacy. We weren't able to be intimate. And, I mean, I'm a very physical person. I like to be touched. I like to be hugged. I want to be right up underneath your armpit. And I just, every time he would breathe, every time he would say something to me, my nose hairs was just singed. So and so couldn't, I couldn't do it. You, you don't think it was something that could be fixed, like extreme brushing or like maybe you have halitosis or maybe you need to see someone? Jada, I went to the store and I cleaned out the dental aisle for him, okay? Wow. I mean, I from toothbrush to tongue cleaner to... To alcohol, to hydrogen peroxide, he to baking became, soda. He, he had a vegan. he had an issue, She's, and it was he chronic. Had a personal mouth. He had a, like a personal issue. It was chronic, and he needed a dentist Damn. to help him, and what it was, was really a bad. Tooth? Huh? Was it like a no, I think tooth? he had some issues with his gums or something oh. like that. Oh, Not so it was something tooth. that he was aware about. Gum disease. It was definitely well. You said gum disease. It was <laughs> it was something that he was aware about, but then when I when I like I mustered up the strength and the courage to tell him about it because you know it, it was I figured the first time I'm like oh it's just a bad day you know we all have a day yeah but then it, it became you know day one day two day three and mm -hmm. so finally I mustered up the strength and I told him about it and he was like oh my god I didn't know like it was a like you know what I mean like it was like a nobody ever, nobody ever fake. told me yeah fake. come to find out. He knew a lot of people knew, and he he had been told, but obviously it's didn't do anything to help. It, 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 is. it is. It was embarrassing. And this is the thing too. I can't bring no man around that has an issue like that. Don't be talking to my friend's face. Right. Because now right. they know that I'm going home with a stank mouth man. <laughs> exactly. And I can't have nobody embarrassing me. Like I hate embarrassment. You know what? <laughs> That's happened to me before. I'm not even gonna lie, guys. I'm just like yeah. shut up, shut and up. And it was. <laughs> Don't you talk to nobody at this party. You just smile. <laughs> Barely do that. Just and, keep your lips quiet. And, and I would shut. cringe when he would like, like she said, I would cringe when he was around people because I'm like, Lord, I it. hope he don't. I hope they don't smell it. Mm, right. I, it really was. A and problem. now they gonna think you licking on my private area with that. And now I got BV. No, I did listen. Uh -uh. <laughs> Not BV. Lord. Don't, don't don't do that. I feel mm -hmm. like as adults, I feel like we don't come around that issue a lot. I hope oh, so. I'm nipping it. In I butt. hope so. But yeah. when I was younger, I used to come across that issue like. Really? Quite some time. Like, I was dealing with, I was, actually, I was really young. I was in middle school. But it wasn't like he had a, school, no, I, he was in middle school. So it's like, he shouldn't even have gotten a pass. Because if I'm, like, mature and old enough to be like, Wait, yo. Wait, was in middle school? How, what? No, we were both in middle school. We was in middle school. But it's just like, yo, why I'm coming to school every day with a clean mouth and right. you can't do the same? What, right. What's going on with you? Because it wasn't consistent. Like, right. some, some days it would be bad breath and, you know, other days he would be fine. So I'm just like. Yo, what's up to what's up with today? Like hygiene is important. Mm -hmm. It is. And I you're right. You can't be intimate with someone who has mm -hmm. bad oral hygiene. I don't want to tongue kiss you. And I love mm -hmm. like, you know, that real romantic yes. kissing and the tongue in and the mm, so, you, and you know, we're in middle tongue. school. And I just feel like this is an age where like, you know, kids start to kiss each yeah, other. And it's right. just like, come on, you gotta right. get your mouth mm -mm. together. together. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, I didn't want to kiss you. <laughs> I didn't want to and sometimes it'd be like, Ugh! Yeah. And yeah. I didn't want to do that to you, boo. So just Get your mouth together. But then there was this other boy when I was in high school, though. And it was like, he was he was a little mixy. He was one of those people that hung out at Atlantic Mall. Mm -hmm. If y'all from Brooklyn, y'all know. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so people knew. Like, we was only talking. Like, I had just started talking to the boy, but people knew. Wow, like, once I boy. said his name, Ooh, that was that was an breath. identifier yes. for him. Damn. <laughs> that he had bad breath. Oh, and I was bad. like, God Dang. damn. It's a real thing. But it was like the first time I ever, like, linked him onto his house. I'm like, I got what they were talking about, but it was kind of like, I asked him, I was like, yo, you smoke? Because I was like, that's what the smell was giving. It was right. giving, like... You smoke cigarettes, not even weed. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he was just like, no, nah, I don't smoke. And I was just like, hmm, interesting. Y'all are nice. And that's why people don't like certain, you know, like. I mean, he lasted for about two weeks. I'm not even going to lie. You didn't so tell it was him? No, that wasn't my man. We uh, Shall talking to him two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Rap is rocking. Please back up. Like, I, you, I be trying to be nice, but I be just. You know what? I think that it's very nice for someone to. People say, even like here, when I just be like, y'all could have told me I was ashy, anything. Like, I feel like people need to be a little bit more like, you could be helping somebody. But we're from friends. Of themselves. We're yeah, friends here. And it's, it's be careful so easy for me to be like, oh, JD, you need to put some lotion on, like your heels, your, your knees. It's I can't ashy. Do girl. about this today. But, I but like, you <laughs> see, somebody that you want to feel like, Selling them like, yo, you stink, yeah. whether it's your breath, whether it's your body odor, right. like that's embarrassing. It's a little harder to say. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I'm just a rep. Careful. Why? I think you have to be careful because you don't want to insult something, somebody. You want to say things in love. And when people don't know you, they don't know where you're coming from. I think that's when you have to be the most careful because I feel like you can insult someone without trying to insult them. And you can get a response that you're not looking for. You know what I mean? You're just trying to help out, but then you get. You know, somebody jumps on you, and I'm like, that's the worst thing that I would want to, you know, go through. So you it depends. I think no that more. there's 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 sensitivities <laughs> around it. You just have to be very careful. Like if Jada was asked, I'm like, baby girl, maybe you need some lotion, honey bun, or, um, you know, do you? I don't even know how I would say it because I don't know her. You I'm know so what I mean? Like, not, girl. Uh, 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 no, I'm like, oh Jada, girl, uh, you need girl, some lotion. Some yeah. Or honey, baby, them, them thighs go look good. Let lotion. me get you some lotion okay. for them. They need to be oiled. You know what I mean? Like so make a joke. Deal breakers. Then for me, I have a. Good amount of deal breakers. Mm -mm. Deal breakers. Feet. Addiction. If you have an addiction to something, you, you have a you small to drag penis. Me into it's, that. A, it's a deal breaker for me. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm penis. just I'm a small dick. So that's not deal something breaker. you're willing to look past. No, ma'am. He has everything else. No, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay, you see the, Break my back. the thing with these like small things that women aren't willing to look past. What's hard to like wrap my head around it mm -hmm. for me is mm -hmm. that. These are things that you're supposed to notice like right from the jump. Absolutely. So before I can even get to like you too much and I notice these things, then I just won't really be interested in talking to you. It's different that if like, you know, we're well into a situation or anything like that. And I find like you're having constant bad breath. Like I'm not going to want to break up with you. Right. Now I feel like I have to have a conversation with you. But I feel like small things like this is really going to decide whether I want to talk to you or not. So if you said that you can't tolerate the the, D, the small D, mm -hmm. right? And you guys are talking and you're feeling this person, everything seems perfect. Are you going to ask for a dick pic? I'm probably already. I, it's going to be a while before we get there, but I'm See, that's a waste of time. You're going to have to send me a dick pic. I know, but I just, I'm not the, I'm not a dick pic person. I just don't, like, because you, cause you're going to ask me for body parts that I'm not willing to send. No, that's just me. I'm always willing to send a dick pic. I'm just, but you're gonna ask. The, it's not that they're not willing. Right. I'm not willing. Right. So don't ask me for something. Yeah. And if I feel like if you, I got to be willing to give whatever I'm willing to ask. You okay. know what I mean? So Makes I would sense. never ask. And I mean, I, I think I've, been, I've been in a situation where I liked the person, but it was just so small. I just mm. couldn't get past it. <laughs> like great conversation. Oh my god, I can't wait, to, wait to be with that person. But then when it's time to be intimate, it's Aww. like. That sucks. Oh my lord! Like it was just, it was. I mean, there's. I'm not saying it needs to be like ten feet long, but it wasn't even like. Poor guy. Wasn't even six inches. It he was can just satisfy bad. you in other one. ways. Like he couldn't give you satisfaction orally in other ways. I hope my mother isn't looking. Yeah. <laughs> I hope my mommy Were isn't you watching. Just judging the book by its cover. I wasn't judging no book by no cover. I saw it. I looked at it. I was very, in, you know, Did you work it. I, as much as I tried to, it did. It just Damn. didn't work out for me. And I feel like you. I think you have to ask yourself very realistic questions. Can you live with this for the rest of your life and not be sexually pleased? Like I just, you know, I just. So what did you do when when you were there and you saw it? Like um, what did you do? 
I mean, I, I, I went through with it. I, mean, I was committed. <laughs> it would have been rude to, got, to get up, but I just kind of felt like um, I, 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 I went through with it. It was what it was. Um, Did you look at it? Was I, like... I looked at it. It just looked. Um, I just had an epiphany. I, I, that I just, just reminded can't. me. I just of can't. I just, I can't. I know that I can do that. I just know that I can't. On Instagram, do that. this boy, he went on Instagram and he was um, asking people for like embarrassing sex stories. Right. And one girl said, he took down his pants and I saw how small his penis was and I screamed and I ran <laughs> and he started chasing me around the no, bed with a jelly bean. <laughs> oh, no. Listen, I had an epiphany. And it all makes sense. Life and the world makes sense now. Everything just makes sense. Now I see why men want us to be virgins and don't want us to right. have any experience. Right. Because that's the only way that a man with a small thingling can have any woman or the woman of his dreams because she don't know anything else about no other dick. So, so I went to this church mm -hmm. thing where uh, the pastor talks to you about you know, when you get together with someone and what it should be and why you should get to marriage being a virgin. Right. And that was the reason. Yeah. Right. Like, you will not know about any other dicks mm -hmm. but the one you have. And that's and what it is it's about little, life in general. And but that's why in marriage people become so curious because they never had anything But like, can you imagine? You like be content and you may be able to settle because you're not interested in anything else because you've never seen it and you don't even know it exists. You know, we talk about this all the time. People don't know what's out there so right. they settle they don't know their they don't know their potential they don't know that they can have certain things they don't know they can be certain things because they do not have the experience not true i've been to one it was amazing i saw a pregnant woman getting, <laughs> i saw a pregnant woman getting rubbed on her belly she looked like she was having a great time i'm like where is your baby daddy she in the corner getting rubbed on and talked to by another man and then you know there was people there was a room where people were Given hand jobs, it was men and women and women and men. It was just a, such a great experience. And you could be a voyager or whatever it's called, where you could watch, you could join. And it wasn't just 40 plus. It was just different age groups, different ethnicities. Right. It was so classy. There was a fire show, a naked woman doing a fire. Naked? Yeah, doing a fire show. And I just was like, this is dope. But again, you wouldn't know because you ain't been. So, hey. <laughs> Maybe having hors d'oeuvres. You guys ever Champagne. seen Thinking about Tyler Perry's Temptation? Huh? All that naked body and the smell. Yeah, I think no, I just, like I just would think that it smells in there. Know when you got stinking, you know. I know, but it's just a lot of odor going. Yeah. There's a, a lot of people's no, bodies I out. Anything. No natural sense. Natural sense. Or like you come in over here to do this with this person. Now you over there and you, you working your body up. It's, or it might just like, be one gr group having an orgasm and you just decided that's who you clicked with for the night. And it doesn't have to be everybody just bouncing around having sex with each other. It could literally just be, it could be just, you know, t touching, like, whatever. This it just was, was a room. for you. It was, it, I thought it was a nice event. Like, the downstairs area was where everyone got busy. <laughs> everybody got busy downstairs. Upstairs was, like, you know, the food oh, and the separated. drinks and the hot tub. It was separated, oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So upstairs, everybody had, like, you know, it was, like, really classy, the hot tubs. The, right. You know, it was a cool drink. Like, it was, like, a club, a, a, a r and club, and everybody just was kind of, like, in lingerie. And then you go to the, it was, like, a good 40 people. And then you go downstairs and somebody's walking around with a little cart with lube and condoms and fucking. Oh, wow. It was so classy. And, and I just was like, this is so dope. I just, I went with one of my homegirls, but we play a lot. So we were just looking around laughing like, bitch, look at this <laughs> shit right here. They wilding. Are they, what is going on? It's about ladies night. It was a funny <laughs> Right? It was fun. And it didn't smell bad or anything. It was cool. Of course I didn't join. I didn't want my friend to think I was a hoe. Oh, I would have. <laughs> Not all. Not you didn't want your friend. Your friend who you went to the sex party with, you didn't, you didn't want, want her to think you was a hoe. Tell everybody that I was out here having sex with so random was, individuals. So you guys just wanted to watch. That was the goal of it the was night? It first party, and we did want to just experience it. It was just an experience for us. Some of those people go to every event, and they know that they want to go and join and be a part of it. And so for me, we were walking around, like, you know, just filling it out. We were invited. It was our first time. We weren't on E or anything. We were pretty kind of sober, so it wasn't like anything okay. made us. Because I was about to, to say, to anybody I go to a sex party with, Honey, I'm not expecting you to be looking at me like, no, ho, you here with me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Whatever <laughs> happens. But you got to no, sign an NDA, that. honey. Nothing gets out. <laughs> no, Nothing gets out. And they were like, you know, it was 
good. It wasn't just about the sex too. It was about like meeting people and like mm. networking. There was some really like prestigious. I was about to say rich people. Right? You were yeah. naked. And I can know? imagine the rich people naked. do shit Wait. like that. Yeah. Wait, so everyone's cell phone is taken at the door? Like, what is that? Think, I don't even, I think, I didn't, I don't even remember. Because the sex party and sex out. life was like that. They yeah. had, to, they took their phones. Y'all probably both looking at each other like, if Jada do something, then I'm, right. then I'm, I'm doing something. Like if she go, I go. Really kind of, it was, it was cool though. Like everybody had their own thing that they were doing and it was just like, you know, mm -hmm. it was a good vibe. Like you didn't even look at it as, as raunchy as it even sounds. It was so classy and people were, it was like round beds and it was like 12, six on this side, six on that side. And like, it was in a big room and it was just like, everybody was in their own little vibe. It was like little low music playing. It was dim. That was on the bottom floor. So it was like an upstairs. You could just go mingle and not do it, even participate or, you know, see it. Hell no. I love a good time. Shit, let's go. <laughs> what you about to wear? Can we match? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I like a good a good experience. We get one life, man. People just be wasting it, wasting the damn time. Mm -mm, we get one life. I'm going. Okay, what? so would you would you say that you're not one to overlook many things? No, I overlook everything. No, no, no. I don't overlook anything. Like, right. I'm very anal about a lot of things. Oral, like your breath, absolutely not. No, mm -hmm. mm -mm, it's not gonna work. And I'm gonna deliver it and make you feel some type of way. You know what? I, I was thinking hi on my on my way here. I what was thinking hi? Can overlook that. He got to be over five. And you got to tell five. me too. Oh. Four eleven. Five five. He got to be over five five. I'm, I mean, is everyone here above five feet? Are you five feet? I'm like what? five two. I why four eleven? Like what kind of question is that? Right. No, the four elevens got to look down. Right. They gotta they gotta look smaller. I'm sorry, unless you're like a woman that is into shorter dudes, I don't really think that most 4'11 men are going to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to try to get that 5'5". Five, five, uh, they do. They have a fetish. They a do. Lot of them Some do. of them have fetishes. They, they want to date women above them. They want to see your heels and they want to they wanna see that they love the long legs. Everybody has a, nothing is wrong and nothing is right. Nothing is, there's somebody for everybody. I'm telling you, like, People are interested. Not to say that right. they're, yeah, but it's like, how really? often are you going to find that that 5'5 five, five woman wants to date someone shorter than her? It happens, but it's not always. I'm not, I'm not saying that there's no one out there like that, but I'm just saying majority rules. Depends on how many options you're used to, you're accustomed to having. I'm not dating nobody over five. I, yeah, five, five. I think that, that is, that's it's definitely just one of my to me. I mean, everything at once or twice. Jada, what? how tall are you? Because you look pretty. You look I'm pretty. Like five, almost five six. Oh, okay. I'm pretty tall. What I'm giving, about, uh, I'm giving uh, myself 11? five five. But I've dated people my height and been madly in love. Or like, I don't even know if he was like half an inch shorter than me. I don't know. Madly. Well, we didn't in love. say your height. We said shorter than you. No, because four eleven is crazy. Like half an inch, but that's like if you're my height, you're shorter than me. Because I'm gonna put on heels, and now you're shorter than me. Right. Ugh, and then now we was... can't flex together. Yeah, but no, but we look <laughs> fucking great together. When I wear some Nikes and we had an out, we look like we looked great together. Yeah, put them I don't heels know, on. I can't we do got that. compliments. Like we looked great. I don't together. know why. I don't. It's just we were a beautiful black couple. Maybe because but... I feel like you you look like a child. I don't know if you're four eleven. I just think that you're just miniature. Like I just I'm no, I don't like it. Because yeah, let's be real, four eleven is short for a man. For a man, it's yeah, very short. It's very short. Could you deal short with a workaholic? Ugh. Yes. I like you, I would look you're past going that. to see him um <clears throat> maybe throughout the week. You might see him one hour a day and that's right before bed. Only if one hour you a day provided a right lifestyle for me to keep busy. Because if not, I'm going to flirt with other men and possibly get into trouble. So my workaholic boo come see me at two o'clock in the morning and we be up in the car chilling what? till five o'clock. In the car in the morning. Why yet in the car? Because we're not there yet? Because we're not there yet. OMG. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work. That's never going to fully work. Why? You're going to get tired of that and bored of that. And have y'all done it? Well, one, <laughs> one, one, Thank one. Jada. <laughs> it's like it? whatever time that I get, I always take the time. Whatever that means. If it's before you got to go to work, if it's after work, because it's, it's late night work. 
Um, because it's honeymoon stage. Anything goes when you're in honeymoon stage. You can be long distance. You can you can you can you can date someone that you have to take flights. But to, once I, but it's honeymoon stage. That's, that's the point I was trying to make. If I'm willing to look past something before I decide, like, all right, I'm looking past it. I'm going to talk to you. Once I start to like you too much, I'm. It's a problem. It's, no, it's like it can be a problem, but it's still something I have to overlook. Cause I chose, I knew so what I was bad. getting into when I decided. Like, You're all so right, mature. well, you can always change your mind. You, I can change my mind. You can always change, but your mind. Mm-hmm. I, I am mature, and I'm looking past it. I'm like, we're gonna make it work. I'm not mature enough for anything, obviously, because let me tell you something. <laughs> In the beginning, I'm having the time of my life, and now I'm just like, I want to see you. Like, no, like, why you gotta go to work today? You know, like, I'm just like, mm, <laughs> to pay these bills. Right, right. <laughs> well, you, she did say she did say time. that if he provided a lifestyle for her that was comfortable, that kept her occupied. Yeah, but I'm concerned be okay because that. now I provide you this lifestyle. You have everything that you want financially, but I'm just not there to spend that quality time with you. I see you on Saturday, but on Sunday Saturday. I have to I have to monitor the market so I can give you Saturday. That's the only full day I can give you. But I go to sleep early because I'm up with the market. I don't have a lot of time for you, but you have a great lifestyle. So then we don't have a relationship. We you do don't not have, have a relationship. You don't have much of a relationship, but you know what? You, that's when you got to put your... Okay, yeah, but that's when you got to put your foot forward, right? I'm mature, guys. I'm not doing it. <laughs> that's when you got to put your foot forward because they work and they're providing for you, right? Whenever time you get that, you know, even if it's little windows, oh, they're at work, but they, you know, they go to break from 12 to 2. Let me go bring them a smoothie. Let me go get some get it's them some that shit. Every lunch. Every time minutes we got, boy. Exactly. Yeah, then that's yeah. when you get your sex in. Get, Girl, you better go on. Ain't no you better way. find that time. Not like that. Like that. Not like, like that. That's one very specific. Week, like, one day, no. one hour a day, that's not. One not hour enough. during the week and you have full Saturdays because no, like, it's not enough. That's not enough? Mm-mm. That's not even like See, that's what I'm saying. Like, my life, I, like, I'm a very, I love experiences. I love spending time. I love getting to know. I right. love having deep conversations. I love going on dates. That will not work for me. So that's a deal breaker for me. Not now, happening. if your partner is a billionaire and you're able to experience anything you want. That's fine. Can I have a boyfriend on the side that's going to break my back in? Okay, so do you think that most people, <laughs> do you think that most people are willing to overlook flaws if your partner has uh, and like it, money. money, absolutely, yeah, that happens. You can do other absolutely. things. Absolutely, not your girl. I'm just not that girl. But it's not enough. It's not enough. I, I feel like that has no. We don't. We won't have a life of meaning. I think that there are a lot of women who will accept, you know, a low quality relationship because that's what I'm going to call it with a man who can provide for them naturally, but. At the end of the day, what is that really going to do for you? Like, what is that going to, what kind of quality of life is that really going to give you? I mean, you guys aren't able to build anything. Where's the communication? Where's the love? Where's the quality time? I mean, personally, it just doesn't work for me. But I know that there are women who value other things more than, you know, the greatness of a relationship. There are women who value materialistic. Absolutely. There are women who value Material. <clears throat> I'll start over. Mm-hmm. There are women who value materialistic things over love, over intimacy, and intimacy doesn't have to be us being physical with one another. Like, how are we intimate if I'm seeing you one hour a week and all day Saturday? Like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting till I get to Saturday in order to feel this amazing connection. Like, yeah. that's not enough. And 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 even if you were a billionaire, I don't know. It would just it would be like obviously I'm not there for the love part. It was just which I'm is there very for the obvious enjoyment of life. It's very obvious because as she put it, low quality mm-hmm. relationship. You're not. It's not of quality. You guys aren't getting any quality time. Yeah. You there is no in- intimacy as mm-hmm. you said there. Mm-hmm. All you're there for is what that person can provide for you financially. Um, I can't really even say. Maybe physically, Could when you? when they can. You got unless really you're obsessed. unless you're getting something. You have to from really be obsessed else. with that person. Where you're just like, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. And some people really like some women wait while their men is in jail. Don't well, ask me why they do that. Before they, you know, that might have been, you know, 
they might have experienced them in jail, but they but they've probably experienced the love for love an extended, exp- you know, so for an extended people, period of time. Like that's but that's the difference of what you're willing to look past, like at the beginning versus when people, your feelings are already there. Right. Well, those are probably people that were able to spend enough time with that person and build enough of a connection for them to be like, you know what, my ba- my man's about to do time. I'm going to hold it down and wait. Now, if we didn't spend that time and, you know, like, you're never around, like, there, what, it, what, re, like, what am I, I have to be obsessed with you. I have to be obsessed with you in order to be able to sit home and wait for you on Saturday. Like, I have to be like, oh, my God, he has the best sex I've ever had. When we do, when Saturday does come, it has to be the most romantic experience every single you time. You see him during the week for one hour. Cool. You see him during the week, one hour during the week. I think a woman like that probably has low self esteem. Really? Mm-hmm. Or he really is that dude. You know, she don't think that she deserves more, or she doesn't require more, or maybe she's Just, he's working. I mean, I get that, he's but still, though, I mean, yeah. But at the end of the day, like one hour a week, right? That's nothing. At no, all. one hour each day. Oh, each... one hour each day still. Yeah. I'm going to see you for a lunch break. Right. Let me see. You, you see me for dinner every, every day. Like, don't don't leave. leave. We, are don't leave. we have dinner together already, each no. day. And okay. then Saturday <laughs> is like the day. Not enough. Not enough. Now, what if mm, I like, like to cuddle that's snuggle. the option so that argue. you don't have to work? <laughs> So that you get to stay home, raise our children. You don't have to See, work, but I have what to outside of him. What am I doing? Like going to yoga when I'm flying to Dubai that's by to myself. You. No, no I'm you're ab- not. He gets vacation now. What I'm saying is Listen, oh, there's the exchange. That's the exchange. In order for me to provide this life for you where you get to stay home, you get to stay with the kids. I have to the work. kids. Like, so, it, I, so you impregnated me and I'm uh, supposed to stay at home with the, with, with the children that you put inside Bad of me house. by myself for an hour. No, 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 no. You can get a nanny. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You no, ma'am. Are definitely no, ma'am. You, at my age, you, you can have a nanny. Work. You can no, have a cook. I don't care. You see what I'm saying? What, what kind of quality of life are my children getting? They don't they have see their, dad. their father for dinner. Wow. No, that have, Talk about family lifestyle. I mean, no, not my child. No. I'd rather not have them. Would you rather work and have a partnership with him so that I'd you... rather work and have a partner. I'll be your assistant. I'll be right up under you. I need to be able to see you. And on top That's of that, just what's going. Pay that... me. Pay me to do a job. Like I, I would be bored. Mm-hmm. I would miserable. be bored. Miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, me and my man text now. If I don't hear from him for you know every five hours, every you know, I'd be like, "Nigga, you alive? Like right. you all right? Right. So an hour a day, like I gotta beg for something. Like, Baby, you coming over? Like I gotta. I, not my personality. Me neither. I can't do it. I and would cheat. That, and I don't I don't believe in cheating. I would probably but you would, it would lead you me would to cheating. There. It would get me there. Because you'd be lonely. Don't go to the gym now. Don't go to the gym because it'd be some fine. I would have a nice body though, because I'd have time to work on it, but I'd definitely be out here in these All streets. the time to work on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And on me. top of that, like there but uh, contrary to what people believe, there are a lot of men that provide for their women. There are a lot of people that Absolutely. there are a lot of men that actually let uh, their woman stays at home or, you know, takes care of the things in the house or the children. And they also are able to give time as well. So I think that's just over the top. That's crazy because I don't know. Like, I I can't see myself dating someone that, okay, you provide all these amazing things, but I don't get to spend time with you. This isn't a relationship then. That's it. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> it's always he gave, the, he gave the this end of the already, spectrum. Right? It's always the, it's either op, it's either left or right. It's never somewhere. Okay, good, Alan. Thank you. Okay, but Alan. I mean, I think that. But do once we really you choose know? to once you choose to accept certain things, you are choosing to be unhappy, right? And knowing that there's more out there for you. Amen. Based on faith. Based on you know you that girl or you that guy or based on your that, worth, just based on your worth, based on what you feel, you know, like you could provide to someone. Like you know, I was single for a very long time. I was single for eight years. You know, no boyfriend, dating, being out here, and I experienced a lot from guys that I was like, and people were like, well, Darnell, why couldn't you just pick one? I'm like, no, because I know something better's coming. Mm-hmm. And I had faith. And listen, if it meant me being single for the rest of my life, I would have been happier single than to would have settled and been unhappy. Thank you. 
And that's like and that's pretty much what life is about. I think a lot of people feel like, oh, my God, I'm going to settle. OK, so you settle for a guy with bad breath. OK, no problem. What happens next? You're intimate. You're having sex with him. You can't stand like you're so distracted by his breath that you can't even be intimate. You can't even connect with him because you're like, oh, my God, he stinks. And so your mind isn't even able to you're not even capable of putting yourself in a position where you can connect. Yeah. yeah, he can't even bust a nut. Yeah, but Hell, you I just also don't even want him you're on so me. distracted by the flaw that you know, you know you you looked past, but mm-hmm. still bothers you. Right. So you ignore everything else. It's kind of like once you are in a relationship when this one thing bothers you so much, everything else starts to bother you about this person. Right. You don't even really like them anymore. You just settled, and because of that one thing, your true relationship with them is tarnished. Absolutely. And I know for a fact I can't be with a man who's not ambitious. That's something I cannot do. If I, you know, start dating you and you're janitor, and it doesn't matter. It's not like you have to have, like, this bachelor's degree. You have to be making six figures just like I am. You got to be doing all this other stuff. Like, no, it's not even about that. Like, if I meet you and you're a janitor, we get married, you're a janitor. By year five, I expect you to be head janitor. By year six, I expect you to, you know, be your head of a team. By year 10, you need to invent a mop. (laughs) <laughs> that is going to revolutionize the exactly. way that people mop floors. Like that's the kind of ambition I'm looking for. You need to be constantly growing, constantly moving. But if I look at you and we married year one and year 10, you still in the same position that I met you in year one. I'm mm-hmm. going to be annoyed. Me I know I'm going to wake up upset. So I would just rather not even do with it because I know you're not going to work for me. And I think the problem is that we get into these situations where we settle for people that we know don't work for us. And then we want to complain. We want to call our girlfriends. And then we're embarrassed because whenever you bring this brother around, they're like, Dan, ain't that the nigga she was just talking about? Talking about? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't want to do that. Hey, and that's what I'm trying to understand. Because... What's it on heart, Jada? What's it on heart? Because <laughs> if wait, you... Wait, if does you, Jada ask this question? It's settling... Is settling getting giving up or is settling compromising? Well, basically just accepting the fact that no one ever is ever going to be perfect or there's always going to be some type of um, situation or issue that's going right. to come into play. Mm-hmm. And that is the thing that I think a lot of people may deal with where they're just like, OK, can I stay in this situation and make the best of it or do I just keep running around like without, you know, knowledge of where the end is going to, you know, where where I'm going to end up at the end. So is it like so you're saying that no matter what, you should just stay like rely on faith and mm-hmm. just know who you are and just know that the greater good is going to come. I could be bad all by myself. I don't need nobody to come be bad with me. You ain't listen. And I'm and I'm and I'm saying that you know, I there are some things I'm willing to compromise, like, mm-hmm. but it got to be the perfect situation for me. Right. It got to be something that we can work on together and build. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, if it's if it's a situation with your breath, we're going to have a dentist appointment. I'm going to, you know, I'm, a, I'm going to give you tools that are going to help you get there. Right. But I got to be willing to do that. And sometimes I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Like, because when you settle, you got to do work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Over the work. And meeting people is already work within itself. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes... You know, a man having kids, that's a deal breaker. You know what I mean? Like, it's already complicated trying to get to know you. But now I got to get to know you, your kid, the baby mama. Mm -hmm. I got to see you every other week because you got the baby. Like, that's a lot. Do I really want to put myself in a situation like that? Do I want to deal with your baby mama looking at you crazy? Do I want to deal with her dipping into her pockets before? You know, I got to wait for Uncle Sam to get it. Then I got to wait for whoever, your your bills. And then I'm after that. Like, no, I'm not into that. I don't want that. Like, and and I don't want you to have no attitude when she call you and we out to dinner. And now all of a sudden you got an attitude. With me, I'm gonna have a problem with that. So no, yeah. I ain't dating no man with no kids because it's not my have thing. Two baby mamas or three. Child, so think about every single time you yeah. compromise and every single time you put yourself in a situation and you were sitting there like, damn, oh, now I gotta deal with this nigga shit. Like I, nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that. And if you do that. Nine times out of ten, you're going to regret it. Mm -hmm. You know your limits. And I think people need to to stick within their limits. I think the problem is that we've been so comfortable and so programmed to draw outside the line. Like that's normal. Mm -hmm. That's an abnormality. It's not normal to draw outside the lines. Like I'm the type of person I draw on the lines. I know what my boundaries are. So if I know something is going to get on my nerve, Something is going to bother me. Something's going to vexate me. Something's going to make me feel uncomfortable. 
I'm going to not put myself in that situation. Yeah. And sitting through it is like literally going to cause you mental like issues with your mental health, your stress. You get sick. People got cancer. People got this and right. that just because they're sitting in situations right. that are not feeding them, feeding their soul, feeding, you know, they're not growing from it. They're just right. sometimes when you're in a situation, you just think about the, the bad part so much that it just becomes like an infection and you're just like. Just get out of it. Yeah, because that was my point earlier, and I feel like once I once this in, this topic was first introduced, I immediately thought about women's shallowness mm -hmm. being the reason mm -hmm. that you know most of us are single. But it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not being shallow. It's it's a lot of things that women aren't able to overlook in order to settle to be in a relationship, and we shouldn't have to. If we know that a bad breath in a relationship is going to be the one thing that's going to make us unhappy and not really be like 100% in that, then it's a no-go from the start. So do you think women settle more than men in relationships? 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. They do. 100? 100%. Yeah, why? Yeah, why? Why do they I do it? I think women, I don't know. I just kind of feel like... Well, even asking that question, I'm mm -hmm. trying to think of things because we don't have any men on the panel today. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of things, uh, things that you know men would have to overlook with us. I don't think men overlook anything. I mean, some women don't. I think clean, it's. Look. I think it's a very small percentage of men looking over things. I think that men, men, for the most part, a man is going to get what he wants. He may not get. He may get 90% of it, but, like, women will get 75, 75. We're, we're comfortable with 60, 65, 70%. Like, men, I think 90% of men get what they want. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, they usually ultimately make the choice. That's the woman I want to marry, right? That's the woman I want to be with. They choose. And the woman is... We... we but at the same time... I we accept. Like, they choose. Mm-hmm. Based on how you make them feel. I, I, Those are I, two I, different kind of women, Alan. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. Some I've people. I've overridden before. Exactly. And it was in a, a situation where it's someone that I know damn well. I know damn well. But you fine as hell. And that, that, <laughs> that, 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 ooh, that bedroom music. <laughs> that if. But at the same time, I know the situation is not going to be as beneficial to me as other people that I have dated in the past have, you know, been able to be. But but my feelings for you are OD. So I've allowed certain things, knowing damn well that, like, you know, like, it's going to drive me crazy. But I'm accepting it because I like how you make me feel. And I like the intimacy or, like, the way you touch me or whatever. It's just, like, I enjoy that so much that I'm overriding shit. That is it's red flags. It's bullshit. It's toxicity. That is toxicity. Mm -hmm. At its best. Toxicity, goddamn, it's taken over my life. <laughs> Maybe back then. Nowadays, I don't think so as if much. If you late, I can't mess with you. Like, I, from the gate. And I'm very, very... Mm -mm. From the gate, I can't mess with you. Because, like, don't make me leave my house and I'm on time. And I'm an on-time person. Way, yeah. I've worked production for, like, 10 years. I've sent out call sheets. I've I've directed. I've done all these things. Like, don't waste my time. If you tell me 7 o'clock, I'm at the door 645 waiting in the car. I'm putting on my lip gloss. I'm waiting for you to show up. Mm -hmm. Like, my call time was 530. I I'm, I misread it, thought it was 5 o'clock. I was in the parking lot at 4.45. Like, Damn. I'm on time. Like, and I think that it's an in, it's inconsiderate, unless you have an emergency, it's inconsiderate to be late. I don't care who you are. I agree okay? The only person that can be late is Jesus. Other than that, everybody <laughs> else can be on time. I have a girlfriend who we speak on and off just because she's never on time. Just, mm -hmm. we go on a dinner, she show up. It's supposed to be seven. She's there seven forty five, like mm. strolling in, like bitch. Don't come and waste my time. Like <laughs> I now show up an hour late for her just because I know of who she is. And I so I think that mm -mm, you're not being late. Okay with that. I love hey, you. You gotta you, know. Boo. You gotta. I, I like, love you. You gotta boo. know different people. <laughs> you gotta know the friends that are gonna be thirty minutes like, late. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. But we're ever meeting somewhere, I'll meet you where you would not expect you to be I'm there. Not gonna lie. I cannot stand when people make me late. So it's right. like, I can't, like, I, I like, that's why I like to get ready and be do everything on my own because I don't want to go to your house and now I'm waiting for you to finish getting ready because, and now you're going to make me late and make me look bad. Right. And, you know, that's another, I used to have a friend that was very inconsiderate. Like, why are you curling your hair when we're supposed to be walking out the door? Right. <laughs> that is so crazy. And especially when you have certain relig relationships, maybe it's a, per you know, whatever, the, whether it's a professional relationship or like anything that can, 
that can be like a relationship that you respect no matter what. I think that it's very important to be on time. But I feel like some people don't understand that 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 affects certain things in their life because it's like you can't even be counted on to be on time. I cannot. I think it's an impression. Really? I'm, I'm a hypocrite in that way too because I really don't like to wait on people. Like if I'm coming to pick you up, and we already know if, if I say six o'clock and I really get to your house at six fifteen, I definitely expect you to be ready. Right. See, right. I don't do that. So, so. But when I come here, it's, it's like I know damn well we're not there on time. So Haitians are always like, I, late. I, I I'm the, I'm, I'm that. It actually makes me non-Haitian that I'm always on time. Oh, no. You know, Haitians but are like two, I don't three give hours people late. a hard time about being late. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. No, I've always been that way since I was a kid. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, anyway, it's right. Y'all are always late. We are always late. I'm always. First of all, I was never I late until I had a kid. Hell no, because I know you got something going on. Like, bro, you successful. You try to test me. I got you. It's a coffee date for me, too. <laughs> so forget about him. Like, what if I don't want to talk to you? Like, mm -hmm. imagine going on a date with somebody that you kind of know, kind of don't know. And then you got to, like, sit through dinner and watch yeah. your brother eat. And you really don't vibe with him. So it's a, it's, if he said coffee date, okay, let's go. Like, and if coffee becomes, you know, dinner. Or breakfast. Not saying that we did anything. I'm just saying maybe we stayed up all night talking. Mm -hmm. Lord, please forgive me. Or mama, don't don't think that it actually happened. But anyway, um, then it, it is what it is. But I think that that's the best way to date. I feel like here at Eight at the Table, we've had numerous of conversations about the first date. And I think that a coffee date is very appropriate. Mm -hmm. It's very appropriate. It's cost, cost efficient. And to me, I just think it's a little classy. Like, mm -hmm. find a little cute... Uh, in the whole cafe, let's go. Like, yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think that? Do you think that there are some women out there that might say, "Listen, uh, he's being cheap with me. I deserve more. I deserve you to don't be whisked deserve away. anything on a first date. Absolutely. You don't deserve anything. <laughs> Honestly, because I, because I, I get, <laughs> I un, no. You better drink some tea. You know, first of all, anything. first of all, don't she don't take your ass on a Pepsi date. Right, Shut right, up. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right. Let's not even listen to Nisha because she has. We're not even. You have to have a mic. You have to have a mic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you better drink some tea. Like, she only eat the. We'll get this little girl some ice cream. She won't right. eat an oyster. She won't eat caviar. Like, girl, bye. Like, and only drink soda well, for breakfast. You do you eat fish? No. I know, girl. That's what I'm she saying. She does nothing. She You're difficult. Nothing. She's a difficult date. Oh, she eats Dominican food. Even, but that's all she orders she's, at the office. She's different. She's difficult. She's different. So Very we're different. not even gonna get into her. I, I, we still love her. you, I Nisha. I feel like if you go into a first date thinking, uh, uh, this nigga needs to take me out on a fancy date. He didn't do it right. He's talking about some coffee. You in it for the wrong reasons, First and all, you like, don't. Your lifestyle. Take him on a date then, if you don't want to go on coffee. Exactly. I know girls who actually pay for the first date. To set the standard. Yeah. I've actually gone on I, dates. And I, I never really understood that. Sorry. Go ahead. No, Jay, no, no. I was just saying, no. like, I've actually gone on dates. And because of, I don't even want you to think I'm taking advantage of you. This is how I eat. Right. So I know I'm about to order up. <laughs> let me just go ahead and let you know you ain't got to pay for this. Because I'm because i about to get it popping. Right. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't, would I, would I treat myself when I go out? I don't even want to intimidate a man. Like, look, I like the finer things. That's how I am. That's how I've been. Blame it on my mama. I was wearing right. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do that on the first date, though. Like, because I, I do I'm expect, I'm hungry. I'm going to I do I expect a man to pay on the first date, not because I'm looking to see, you know, what he can do for me. Or right. I just, I want to, that is, him setting the standard for our relationship. I want to know that you, when you take me out, cool. That's this impressive. is this is how you giving it up. Now, if I go ahead and tell you, look, I know how I get down. I'm not gonna, you know, like I'm not gonna expect you to have to. Or if I pull out my car, like I know I went in, like you know, I just want to see make for sure me. That that's know. just too much words, and that yeah, just but, seems like a test. No, but I'm not even finna do all of that because I'm like I don't even want to complicate on, nothing. I'm just not gonna do all that. But on top of that, I'm never going out. Look, I don't got a lot of time. When I come out and we go to this restaurant, I want all of that. I want that, that, that. And that's not all the time. It's just that I like to try things. I might not get an entree. I want to try this appetizer. I want to try that drink. And so sometimes it'd be like, oh, she's trying to take advantage. No, that's not the case. So let me go ahead and pull my money out or pull my card out to let you know. Or at least like, and if you're the type of person that's like, oh, no, I got this. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to like, in the beginning, I'd be like, I'm going to let you know. If it's that, if I'm at a restaurant that I've been waiting to go to or something, I'm just like, I want to let you know, like, I've been waiting to come here. 
I'm about to go in. I don't expect you to be responsible for it. Or like we can go half, we can double dutch or whatever, Mm -hmm. because I am very bougie. So (laughs) I don't even want you to feel like I'm just trying to take advantage of you. Now, when that does happen, the person usually does pay, but I'm being very honest. Like, I don't mind. Like, I really don't mind. Like, because I know that I'm not just going to come. I don't want to sit here and act like I'm not hungry because I'm. I'm very hungry. <laughs> and I don't want to sit here and look at you like, I hope you can afford it. No, let me get the, um, you know, yeah. So that's just how I am. Yeah, definitely. Uh-huh. And Thank I was you. about to say, Anna, a side of lobster, please. Absolutely, yes. What I'm going to get. Right. And then on top of keep that. Them, c- keep them coming. $20 a shot in the restaurant. You just you better pay, pay that. So I'm okay. Right. So if that's the case for the first date, I just sometimes like to put that on the table, like, you know. I'm here to enjoy myself. So, so can we, can we just lay on the table what's one thing you are willing to look past and one thing you are not willing to look past? <clears throat> Start with our guest. Oh Lord. <laughs> I want to look past someone who's not. Go ahead, Jada. I was about to say, let's start with our guest and uh, Jada opens her mouth. No, no, Jada, go ahead. I was hoping, no, no, no. I really wanted to. No, no, no. Oh, Lord. Go ahead, go ahead. Now I got to think. I had to think about it. I got to think. Go ahead. Okay, can we pause the cameras? No, I'm I'm willing to look past someone who's not completely financially at a place where, you know, like, because I have, if I'm dating someone who is not yet there, like, I have faith in you. I'm going to motivate you. I'm going to try to, like, help you in ways that I can, push right. you in the right direction. Right. So I'm not always expecting you to be a, a six, seven, eight-figure person. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's something that I can look past. I can look past someone who's like, yo, I'm working on it. And I know that statistically, most men, whatever, most people find their success in their, like, mid-40s or whatever. Like, that's what something that I've read on. And I, I just understand that a lot of people get to a successful point and like, you know, their 40s or late 30s, whatever. Maybe sometimes even 50s, like if we're talking big bo- big money. So it's like, I'm not sitting here like, oh, you got to be able to have me in a mansion or this and that. Like, no, I'm fine with working with someone and maybe we can even work on it together. We right. can build a business together. Just have a vision or have some type of, like, your, you have to have some type of potential. Sure. I can look past your financial right. position right now. You cannot be, you got to have a car. <laughs> you got to have a car. <laughs> You can't be homeless. That's it. But, you know, you you know, if you're working on it and you have a plan, I, I like a man with a plan. I'm not going to look past. Um, there's a lot of things I'm not going to look past, but that's one thing that I can look past. But I can look past a past. Mm-hmm. Someone who doesn't have the same background as me. Um, someone who doesn't, who didn't have the same opportunities, maybe. Um, and probably was wayward, you know what I mean? Um, but is reformed, you know? I could look past that I because I feel like everyone isn't given a second chance and it's no, no one's place to judge anyone. Mm-hmm. I feel like some people get the raw end of the stick maybe because they didn't have the right lawyer or their parents weren't involved or... They didn't have teachers in school that motivated them. So I'm willing to look past that. Um, Only for certain situations. Mm -hmm. Only for certain situations. Um, What I'm not willing to look past is a lack of ambition. Mm -hmm. That's not something that I'm willing to look past because I feel like if I'm out here doing, progressing, moving, um, trying to trailblaze, I need somebody with the mentality that's going to help me do that or do that with me. Mm -hmm. I might annoy you because I'm on a plane here going here or I'm working on this project. I can't be with you all the time or uh, I'm trying to start up a business and I don't, that's my singular focus. Like I need somebody who is either working on his own or is willing to build a kingdom with me. So that's something I'm not willing to look past, lack of ambition. I love that. That's mine too. You know, <laughs> for real, because you ain't going to hold me back. You can't. I don't want to be set back. I don't want to have to wait on. Like, I don't want you to feel bad because I'm on the move. Like, no, Mm-mm. you got to have something going on or something that we can work on. Like, I want the best. I want I want 
shoot, I, I want to own a, a mall like American Dream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they still owe money on that one. They still owe a lot of money on that one. The dreams and the goals that I have, like, look. They still dreaming. Right. (laughs) Right. But, like, I dream so big that it's like I have to have someone who matches me in that way. Like, do you want want a lot? Because I want a lot. Okay? With the experiences that I've had, I just can't not have a lot. So I need someone who's on the same wavelength. Like, someone who has the same mindset as that. So I get it. I like that point. And it's like, I know I asked the question, but I'm sitting here. I let you guys go. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, why is it so hard for me to think about something that I am willing to look past? Because I I do have a long list of things that I'm not willing to look past. Um, But I think I'm going to go ahead and say I am willing to look past somebody with a busy schedule. I am willing to look past <laughs> like <laughs> I'm willing to look past a workaholic just because I know it's nothing personal. You can't be sexy as hell being a workaholic though. Cause I'm like, what's this which it's nothing personal? You, <laughs> you you get into it and I'm also over here getting into it. Even right. if I even if I do have more time for you, I feel like I'm going to make it work so that our relationship is good and we're gonna find any time that we have to be together. Because, I mean, you working, I'm working. It's, it's going to work for us eventually, you know. Um, so I'm, I, that's, that's going to be my answer for now. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm still a little shaky on it, but. <laughs> okay, I, I can give you a lot. Um, <laughs> um, physical attractiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I have a lot of quirks, like little things that I don't like. Like Harry? Like, uh, if your teeth is fucked up, can't look past it. If you, like, have those, like, really, like, I used to bite my nails and they're, like, really, yeah, <laughs> kind of nails, can't look past it. <laughs> um, receding hairline, <laughs> can't look past it. Anything in the physical attraction area, can't look past it. Because if you're going to be mine and you, like, and I got to bring you around people and I got to look at you, too, like, mm-hmm. it ain't going to work. Ain't gonna work. That's honest. You gotta be fine as hell to me. I love a fine man, but they be you dangerous. You be fine with a receipt man line. Just, you know, give him some real game. You have to be attractive. Tell him to go to bold. Yeah. <laughs> I think what you're saying is basically you have to find them attractive, mm-hmm. right? When, and I don't, want, I don't want to find anything about you that is just like, eh. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I squint my eye. Right? You ever be trying to show your friend a picture? Like, yeah, he's Yo, so no, good. hold on. It be my friends trying to show me who they talking to and they scrolling like, for that long. It's like, what, bro? Hold show on, me the picture. Like, like, his outfit why are you so, right? Sometimes it's not about a My friend did that it's to me last swag. week. And I'm yeah. like, why are you it's swag. Swag. about swag, honey? Because you can be fine with no swag, honey. Well, we, I love that. That's, that's, you. Bad. Bad. that's not a bad thing. Is that supposed to be scary? First of all, I need somebody to love me more. Oh. But see, this is the thing, right? Sometimes when someone loves you so much. They just love you like they you've never been, like loved. never been loved, loved before. Right. To them, they can be like, come on, let's go. That's who I, that's, that's who they are. Well, maybe no. that's just because well, you're in love with maybe, them. Maybe this is an inappropriate, not inappropriate yeah. response, but I felt this way with the same middle school boy whose breath stink. <laughs> 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 but I was just like, oh my God, this he was so in love with me. And yes, he treated me like a fucking princess. And even up until I got into my real relationship, I always still thought back on that boy like, Please, that you is like... book for Christmas? What? <laughs> no. I, I, like that. Skittles. I was I, I always it. thought back to that boy like, yo, nobody has ever loved me like that boy did. Even when in my very first relationship and I was like, I was 17 to 21 in my real relationship. And I always thought back to when I was, what, 14 years old. And that boy loved me so much. But yeah, his Did he still. worship you? Is that what it was? I See, mean, that's scary. That's I mean, no. You. Like, sometimes. <laughs> like, I feel like love. worshiping is that that's like you dick riding. Like, yeah. no, he, was, he wasn't dick riding me. Like, we was, you know, we was a little thing. Um, yeah. Wait. <laughs> he was no, no. Honestly, he wasn't my boyfriend because I was still hung she up. She was talking he was, to him. No, he was. I he was still hung up on mall. my old boyfriend, so I never really. I was just like, you know, you could like me and we can talk, but I was still actually giving myself room for my old boyfriend you know to come what? back around. But he was, he was so into. He was in love. You know, with that's me. okay. If someone really that's loves okay. me, though, 
Like, I like, I love to be liked and loved. But sometimes I feel like sometimes, I feel like sometimes too much love can be, like, burdening. Because now it's like, Clingy. Mm -hmm. I have to put your feelings before mine sometimes. Right. And that's difficult. That's almost kind of like, I don't know if I can deal with that. If I'm not there yet. If we're both there and we're both on the same page, madly in love, like, oh. Fine, you can you can do it. No, you can do it. like if we're both, if we're both like just you know meeting in the middle, cool. But I can't be with someone who loves me like I don't know way more because then I feel like I don't know I'm gonna stay because of your love or I'm gonna mm -hmm. you know Ooh, yeah feels obligated feel obligated There's a sense of obligation like men to stay them. with women for that reason sometimes like yeah. she holds me down she loves me so Eventually much they leave but I don't want to be with her. Eventually sometimes they, they don't. Sometimes mm -hmm. men stay in marriages. A lot of men stay in marriages. I, I feel like when other, they father with other women, when, when someone loves you more than you love them, it's great when your relationship is great. But right, it, yeah. it, it's so horrible when you want to leave. Yeah, right? and they're just they just trying to fight for something. You're just like, I don't want this shit. Yeah, I don't yeah, want it. But it's just like, damn, you crying like you really <laughs> heartbroken. <laughs> That's like not crazy. <laughs> like you got boogers coming out. Like your nose, damn. Like, all right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Just forget I said anything. Come right. on. Like, yeah, you blowing my shit right now. But it's, it, that sounds terrible to you. I even was about say. to say, I'm horrible. It sounds so terrible even hearing it because we all want someone to love the shit out of us and accept us for who we are and accept our flaws. I'm and not think, overlooking like, certain someone things. Someone just thinking that you're perfect for them, mm -hmm. it sounds like such an amazing thing. But then yeah. when you get into it, you're just like, if again, you you're going to wake up and it's going to bother you no matter mm -hmm. how much they love you. Because you're overlooking you. things, obviously, right. that you didn't leave when you were supposed to and now absolutely. it's a burden absolutely it becomes a burden i'm hardcore i'm sorry when your birthday i know it's like july 22nd <laughs> i was about to say are you a gemini no ma'am cancer. cancer oh my Krabby god patty cancers are amazing thank you doll i appreciate that cq i'm love pisces cancer scorpio we're water signs yeah. Okay, so before we close out we have a question from the audience that's looking for advice um, it says, I'm 32, currently jobless, single, no kids, no career, no degree, and depressed. Mm. Why do I feel like I totally failed in life and that there's no hope for me? What you going to do? <laughs> Honestly, first, first reading this, I felt like uh, this person stated everything wrong with their life and they're looking at the glass half empty and not half full um with everything that's going on in their life I can see why they feel like they're at rock bottom and then they feel like they failed in life but there's always hope there's always hope because when you're all the way down there there's nothing but to get back up like there's only up and you're still young like at 32 yeah 32 you can literally turn your life around and you can achieve everything that you feel like you haven't achieved yet. It's not the end. You have so much life ahead of you. You still have another 32 to go, if not more. So it's like at this point, you should see, okay, this is where I am. I don't want to be here. Now start taking steps to change the situation. If you're jobless, do anything right now. You might end up at a job that you didn't want, but you might meet a person there or fall in love there and start a new journey with someone that motivates you or helps you to get to another place. You might meet a like-minded person. You just have to get motivated in some kind of way. What is it that you love? What are your hobbies? What is something that you can do? Maybe you can talk to other people that feel down and out. Maybe you can express yourself on a blog or start recording yourself talking about things and maybe meet like-minded people. There's so many things that you can do to just, you know, Bring, bring yourself around people that maybe feel where you are and you can just have chemistry with someone, make friends, and then, you know, just start from there. But, like, you have to work. You have to take care of yourself. You have to eat. You got to live. So start, start there. And you never know what happens after you just start taking the first steps. It's not over for you. It's, it could just be the beginning. And you can be stopping your success and stopping your blessings by giving up. You never know what's in store for you. I agree. I think my personal advice would be uh, to find a really strong support system for you because being this down and out and especially being depressed, find people that you can talk to, find people that can connect you to different job opportunities. And when you do figure out what your hobbies or things that you like or, you know, things that you know that you can get into um, to create a better life for yourself, have people help you with that. 
and, you know, connect you to different opportunities. And get you some Medicaid and get you some antidepressants <laughs> or something like that. Because the government I, will help you. Right. I think um, before they do all of that, because I think those are really great answers. But the, <laughs> before they do all of that, they got to find a reason to live. Mm -hmm. They got to pick themselves up and know that it's not that bad. Believe it or not, even though it sounds destitute it's really not it's not that bad like the fact that you're alive the fact that you're still here means that you have purpose means that you have a contribution to the world so you got to find that thing that makes you wake up in the morning and say I belong to be here I, I belong here I deserve to be here I have a contribution to make to the world and then you look for the support then you look for the the aid that's going to help you you know, get to where you're trying to go. But you you have to find a reason to go on. You still got to find a reason to be here and to be a contribution to the world. Because mm -hmm. right now it just sounds like the person just wants to give up. And I'm here to tell you it's not that bad. It could be much worse. You could not be here. But you have an opportunity to fulfill that purpose that and God has set out for you. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. And you can't beat yourself up too. Like you right. can't constantly abuse yourself with your words, your thoughts. You have to speak life into yourself, mm -hmm. um, talk more positive, like meditate, do things that like will help you be into like a better mind state. Because if you constantly beat yourself up or abuse yourself or say negative things to yourself or say you're a failure or a loser right. or you're this, you're that, you're going to believe it. It's going to become you. Mm -hmm. So get out of that. Um, yeah, get out mm -hmm. of that headspace and get into a place where you believe in yourself. You know that there's hope. You know that you can get out of it. You know that there's so much more in life. There's so much going on around you. There has to be something that you can do to get out of the situation that you're in. Daily affirmations and uh, manifestation. Mm -hmm. Somebody paying that phone bill because they asked the question. Right, so exactly. that's a blessing right there. You know what I mean? Right. You healthy, you thinking. You healthy, so. you you still have your mind. Your you're mind. still in the right mm -hmm. piece of, you know what I mean? You, you still have the mindset. Like you're, you're there. You just, you're down right Take now. Take the first step. Take the first step. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You can't do anything without your phone now. It's in your face. You, I have to pay for my food with Apple Pay. And then all these social medias is on my phone, too. So like, I got to open it and see what's going on in the world. It's my news channel. So it's like you always have your phone on you. And it's always just in your face that everyone's living and, and happy, whether they're pretending or where they really are. They're traveling. They're, they're living comfortably, whatever. And people look at that and they look at their situation. And it's so crazy because I went to Red Lobster the other day. Yes, I like Red Lobster and I love it. All right. <laughs> and mm -hmm. and um, I saw this cu this couple. They must have just moved back from Jamaica or moved from Jamaica or I don't know. But they were just they had their little matching burgundy on and they just was they was, you know, it was her man's birthday. He has gold tooth. And I was like, look at this cute couple. <laughs> and they were trying to take a picture of each other. And I just was like, you want me to take a picture of you guys? And they were just so happy and just so like in the moment and so grateful to be at Red Lobster and just so like in love with each other and nothing else mattered. And sometimes you have to understand that everybody else's life does not have shit to do with your life. Everybody else's happiness, livelihood, nothing, everything you're in control of it. So if you just put yourself in a position where you're not, you're not feeding for what everybody else has, you don't want everybody else's dreams or everybody else's goals. You find your own dreams, you find your own goals and you work towards it because you can literally be happy. You just have to find your own happiness and, you know, just make the best of, out of your life. Absolutely. And I was so happy to be at Red Lobster that day. And I was just like, you know what? This shrimp is good. It don't taste as good at um, Sexy Fish in Miami. They don't put enough garlic. <laughs> so it was a good day. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. I can't wait to put on a matching outfit with somebody that I really like. I got a big dick. You know? It's like I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, like, it'll take a lot to make me happy for real. For real you have it. <laughs> Work. Okay, we're closing out. <laughs> I'm like, on that note. Yeah, on that note. On that note, we are officially closing out. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe on all uh, social media platforms. We're on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Patreon. Just please keep supporting us. We are an independent, um, independent production. Um, so our so your love and support means everything to us. Um, and we're going to give it back to our guests. Please let them know where they can find you on any social media platforms. You guys can find me at Darnell the Brand on Instagram and on TikTok. Follow me for influencing, hosting, um, and just your everyday best friend in your head.
Yeah. Thank you for having me, guys. Yes, we loved amazing. having you. It was this a is good amazing. Time. This is really amazing. Great Thank thought. you so much. Okay. Yes. Come see you next see time. Us. Goodbye, everybody.